Alright, here we go. Hello, my name is Tristan Pope, and today we'll be going over how dice are made. So first off, what kinds of dice are there? There's the D2, classic coin, D4, pyramid, D6, your average cube, D8, 8-sided die, D10, 10-sided die, and going on from there, the D12, D20, and the very odd D100. So manufacturing. The actual manufacturing process starts with beads or pelts of finished plastic, and these pelts include the polymer, the colorants, and all additional chemicals. The plastic pelts are put into a hopper that feeds into the ejection molding screw plunger. This is essentially a screw that sits within a cylindrical chamber. The screw forces the pellets through the chamber, and as they move, they are heated until they melt into raw plastic. This plastic is then forced into the closed mold. The mold is kept cool so that the plastic hardens almost as soon as it enters the mold, and the mold is then opened, releasing the dice onto a conveyor that moves them along to the next station while the mold is closed once more to allow new plastic in. Basic dice can be made with just one screw operating to force plastic into the mold. Multicolored dice require two screws. Once the dice have left the mold, they are cleaner, remove trace elements and imperfections, and then move on to printing where the indentations for numbering are printed in an appropriate color. The dice are covered entirely with paint so that the entire die is painted the color of the numbering. Then, when the paint dries, the dice go into a tumbler with the coarse material. The friction of the polishing material against the surface of the dice scrapes off all the paint except that of the indented numbering. The dice are then put through a second polishing operation with a finer polishing agent to remove scratches caused by the paint removal and generally enhance the polish and luster of the dice. This tumbling process that most gaming dice go through causes the slightly round edges you see on standard gaming dice, which wears the surfaces and the edges unevenly. Technically, the dice will, result, will roll less true as a result. And then we have injection molding, the process by which the dice are made. Wide array of plastics can be used for injection molding. The choice of the plastic depends on the properties required in the finished part. Some examples of plastics that can be injection molded include epoxy, acrylic, teflon, polycarbonate, polyethylene, and polystyrene. Dice need to be made from a hard plastic with good impact strength that can easily be colored. This leads most dice to be manufactured with one of the many thermoset plastic polymers, which are perfectly colorless. Well, most of them are. Which means that pigments or dyes have to be added to the polymer to obtain the desired color for the finished dice. This can be either an opaque or translucent substance, and for many dice, a combination of pigments are deliberately and perfectly mixed to create a swirl or other combination of colors. The mold itself is a two-piece construction made of aluminum or steel that will determine the actual shape of the finished dice. Thus, a mold for a simple six-sided die would be a cube, or two halves of a cube. Pips or numbering for the dice are actually a part of the mold itself and appear as extrusions in the mold, which then result in indentations in the dice. The molds themselves are typically made through CNC machining process, where computer models run the machines to shape the metal, and includes draft walls to allow for injection of the completed part. Now quality testing. We have the stacking test, the salt water test, and rolling a thousand of times to see, you know, how the standard deviation works out. So first off, the stacking test. Here you can see um, pictures of dice from multiple brands stacked together. And so you have 10 dice from Crystal Cast, 10 from Chessex, except for the translucent where they have nine. Coplo, 10 of each, and Game Science, 10. And then stack order from left to right for each picture is 20 in the 1, the 12 in the 9, the 11 in the 10, and the 14 in the 7, but the 14 in the 7 is for the game science dice only because they use a process called flashing. So as you can see, by stacking these sides together, you can estimate the width of the dice itself between those two sides. And this can be done to determine whether some sides are wider than other sides on the die, and vice versa. So as you can see at Crystal Cast, their dice, their 20 and 1s, are very wide, much wider than their 12 9s and their 11 and 10s. And then for their, I believe, opaque die, their 20 and 1s are much less wide than their 12 9s and their 11 and 10s. 
So if you compare every one of the, these sets of die, Game Science does the best at coming out with a pretty even sides, except for the 14 and 7 due to the, pro due to the flashing process. They stack up better than every other die in the stacking category. Moving on to the saltwater test, we have this D20 where it will be dropped in the pool of saltwater and this will be done to kind of test the density and to see if a side is weighted in the, on this D20 or not. So you will keep on rolling the D20 in this saltwater bath and see if any one number side tends to roll face up more often than the others. With dice with a larger number of sides, the D12s and the D20s, it is easier to tell if they are unbalanced on one side or not. And for other dice such as D4s, D6s, you may need two different layers of saltwater solution. That way the dice can float in between them and actually be able to do weighted sides without one of the flat faces just coming straight up or sinking all the way down. Then we have the rolling test, and here we have a chart that compares Chessex D20s and Game Science D20s, and as you can see, Chessex appear to be less, well, less consistent than Game Science die. This can be chalked up to any number of things, such as how are the edges done? The edges on the Chessex dice, for instance, are more rounded and will just roll further across tables and slip more often, whereas Game Science die actually have solid corners and edges, making their die rolls much more random as they seem to pop around much more like as if they were popcorn. And so basically what you can see here and you can take into account is that even though obviously no, no test will be perfectly 500 across the board for 10,000 rolls for each number on a d20, these um, charts still show staggering differences between the quality of the die and so from between Chessex and Game Science you're probably better off getting a, a d20 from Game Science since they seem to average better in every category across the board, whether it be stacking, salt water, or the ramness test of rolling it thousands of times. Thank you for watching this video today. Hope you have a great day.